Occasionally, we come across someone in life who just chills us right to the core. Call it intuition or instinct if you want. But something triggers a red flag. The hairs on the back of your neck stand up. Your stomach twists. And you just know something is wrong. Rosemary Nidlovu is exactly the kind of person who would cause this fight or flight reaction. The atrocities Rosemary committed over the course of six years can't be attributed to her age. In fact, there are many indications that she should have known better, including her previous employment as a policewoman. Born in South Africa, in the township of Thembissa, there's not much information about Rosemary's early life to go by. Were her actions later in life a result of some childhood trauma? Were they learned? Thembissa itself has a rough history. The township was formed in 1957. As black people were evicted from legally designated white areas during the apartheid, these townships were broken down even more into ethnic groupings by a strategy plan that would implement independent homelands. And Thembissa just couldn't catch a break. In 2016, a tornado hit the area and left roughly 400 people destitute. But as many experts have pointed out, coming from a traumatic background isn't an individual experience and doesn't usually result in murders. Having lived through a tough past or even a horrible one isn't justification for future actions. So what happened to Rosemary to set her on a path of terror that she took? At some point during her life, Rosemary joined the South African Police Service, and the Thembissa Station was her home base. During her time there, she would eventually reach the rank of sergeant and was considered a respected member of the force. Colleagues would later remember her as a gambling addict who would use the station to avoid loan sharks. An unfortunate situation, but again, not an indication of just how totally she would wreck the lives of those around her in the near future. Let's take a moment to note that not every policewoman or woman is without flaw. Law enforcement isn't always resistant to corruption, and perhaps this is where Rosemary was first tempted. It's obvious from the observations of those around her that Rosemary likely had a problem with money, both holding on to it and spending it. But what made her decide that murder was the answer? Some of the most famous cases in the U.S. revolve around life insurance, usually a husband or wife who kills their partner to collect a large sum of money. But we rarely see an entire string of murders based on the concept. What made Rosemary believe that she would be able to get away with this? Her motivation may be revealing itself, but her logic was clearly lacking. By 2018, there was a total of six victims, all easily traced back to Rosemary. Let's take a closer look at the victims. In the order, they lost their lives. Madala Witness Hamu, Rosemary's cousin, was her first victim in 2012. Madala was found beaten to death in a small town just north of the Thembissa township. Rosemary would get 131,000 South African rand the equivalent of $7,778 U.S. dollars today as a result of her cousin's death. Then, in June 2013, Rosemary's own sister, Audrey, was found murdered while staying with Rosemary. The cause of death was revealed to be a combination of poison and strangulation. Apparently, whatever was going on, Rosemary didn't have time to wait for that poison to take Audrey out. In what might have appeared to be a natural death, she decided to quicken the events. This is a particularly cold murder, and only Rosemary's second. After all, killing your own sister or sibling is an act that has been horrific since the time of the Bible, with Cain and Abel first crossing that line. This instance appears to be an indication that something was clearly wrong with Rosemary. So many things about Audrey's murder are horrific. Not only was she Rosemary's own sister, but Rosemary even murdered her in her own home while Audrey was there relying on her for a safe haven. Rosemary felt confident in putting her sister through the discomfort of poison 
before finally strangling her, an intimate act that isn't quick and often requires the murderer to face the victim and deal with exactly what they're doing. In 2021, in court, Rosemary was accused of tampering with evidence by removing two teacups from her home and washing them in a bucket of water. Two police officers witnessed the removal of evidence and cautioned her against it. She was further accused by impersonating her sister, who she shares many physical similarities with, to take out the life insurance policies. Rosemary's response to be questioned on this topic is definitely a red flag. She said, I don't remember impersonating Audrey and pretending to be her. That's not exactly a denial. From Audrey's death, Rosemary would receive roughly 42,000 US dollars in a life insurance payout. That seems like a fair amount of money, but greed set in with Rosemary and it wasn't long before her next act. The same month, June 2013, Rosemary's niece was also found, alive, but beaten so badly that she couldn't speak. Days earlier, the niece, named Zanel Motha, had been staying with Rosemary for about two weeks. It's unclear how long after Audrey's death this happened, but Rosemary received an additional $7,000 after taking out funeral and life insurance policies for Zanel. Rosemary was able to hold off for two years, and then in 2015, her boyfriend and the father of her child was discovered murdered and dumped in the same small town where the first victim was found. His name was Maurice Mabasa, and Rosemary would receive a little over $7,700 US dollars. The media notes that two weeks prior to his death, Rosemary had been asking around about his insurance premiums. This is another murder that has layers to it. First off, although not much can be found about Rosemary and Mabasa's relationship, killing the father of your child is a horrific act. Losing a parent in general can traumatize a child, but to find out later that it was your own mother who killed your father is unthinkable. Rosemary also put herself in particular danger by committing this murder showing once again a level of disregard for getting caught. The policies that would result in her receiving a decent amount of money were made by her, not Mabasa. This was a clear and direct connection that also showed motivation. At this point, four people in Rosemary's immediate life were dead, but it would be a few more years before law enforcement caught up. Unfortunately, Rosemary and Mabasa's child would later pass away in 2016, although it's hard to find any information on the cause of death or circumstances. But Rosemary did manage to get access to the child's trust fund account, set up on behalf of her ex-employers, until his or her death. The fifth murder was of Maina Mashaba, Rosemary's nephew. He had met with her the day before. He was found dead in the small town that she seemed to prefer for dumping bodies just north of Thembissa. This murder, her second to last, took place in April of 2017. Her final victim would be another nephew, the son of her sister Audrey who she killed years earlier. Brilliant Mashigo was last seen in Rosemary's company on January 22nd of 2018 in the town of Bush Buckridge. Two days later, his body was found there as well. When questioned in court, Rosemary revealed that she had taken out funeral policies for her nephew. What's crazy is that this string of very obvious personal, connected murders, all resulting in decent chunks of money for Rosemary, aren't what got her caught. She was eventually recorded trying to get an undercover police officer and companion, both posing as hitmen, to kill her sister Joyce and Joyce's five children. Number one. No cap. Number one. So now let's wait. 
This is the most horrific plan of all and shows how Rosemary had truly become emotionless at this point. She wanted them to burn Joyce and the children alive in their own home. Rosemary's own former boss and another co-worker both investigated her case, and as of early 2022, it was revealed that even being put behind bars wasn't stopping the killer cop. She was out for blood and revenge. As Rosemary's case moved forward in court in 2021, the media noted that she appeared glamorous, with stylish clothing and manicured nails. She was initially charged to serve six life terms in jail for the murders of her relatives and boyfriend and was sentenced in November of 2021. Along with six counts of murder, she was also sentenced for defeating the ends of justice, fraud, inciting to commit murder and the attempted murder of her mother, the latter of which not much information can be found on. But it isn't too surprising considering her track record thus far. After everything, she received about 83,000 US dollars in insurance money from the murder she committed. But was it worth it? In 2021, as Rosemary made court appearances, she repeatedly spoke out about how unwell she felt, citing dizziness and swelling of her feet due to shackling as common ailments. This actually got the trial postponed initially, but Rosemary didn't gain anyone's sympathy. She spent most of her time in court swaying from side to side in the dock, trying to ask the nearby families of victims for forgiveness, even while denying her guilt. Her direct words were, to all these families, I know they think I am responsible, but that is not so. The truth is only known by God. However, be that as it may, I would like to ask them to forgive me. Once again, she weaves a tangled web, one that doesn't exactly make her look innocent of the crime she was accused of. There's another twist in the case. Rosemary had at least one and possibly another partner towards the end of her run. Another former police officer, Noam Mudau, was charged with conspiracy to murder her husband in April of 2022 and has been labeled as Rosemary's co-accused. They met while in service together. When charged in April, Mudau was heavily pregnant and the case was postponed considering her pending labor. Her ex-husband, Justice Mudau, who had divorced her a year prior, watched from the court gallery. He's been very open in stating that Mudau continues to threaten both him and their children. Justice seems to be a fitting name for the man who came forward and notified authorities that his wife and Rosemary were planning on having him murdered. This was back in 2018. And as of 2022, he was just relieved that it was finally being taken care of. Reports make it seem like Rosemary and Mudal tried to use the same undercover hitman who would later give up Rosemary for her plan to murder her sister. They wanted justice of Mudal's plan, which would leave her with a large sum of insurance policies. Justice claims that the hitman were promised about 8,000 US dollars to murder him. Rosemary was also accused of two more planned murders. She had been plotting to kill a sergeant and a colonel, the latter being her former station commander and co-worker. 
and therefore faced the court alongside Mudao in April. The sergeant investigated the murders that she was eventually convicted for. According to reports, there's a third accomplice who is at large and has not been named. We know only that it's another woman. It was obvious in the April 2022 proceedings that Rosemary had been through the courts already. She posed for photos, wore stilettos despite having her legs shackled, and waved to the crowd. Mudao, however, covered her face with a mask, wore heavy clothing, and tried to avoid the cameras as much as possible. There's something chilling in the photos of Rosemary appearing in court. In each, she's dressed well, often with her hair pulled back and brows raised, as if to question the onlooker or make them question themselves. She often sits poised, her hands crossed in her lap, and has an air of confidence about her, as if she thinks she might still get away with murder, despite currently serving six life terms. With these new changes, it's likely that Rosemary will only get time added to her sentence. So if there's no chance of the murderess getting out of prison, the expression on her face hints at something more sinister. She doesn't feel guilt at all for what she's done. Both women are scheduled to appear in court on September 15th. What went through Rosemary's mind as she was planning that initial murder of her cousin back in 2012? For most people, family represents love, compassion, connection, togetherness, but apparently not for Rosemary. She saw each victim as a bag of money, a way to move up the ladder financially. If life was lost along the way, so be it. If it just happened to be someone close to her, all the better easier to take care of them, as she proved by killing her sister in her own home. Rosemary was concerned more with convenience than not getting caught. Anyone looking in from the outside could have seen this train wreck coming. All signs indicate that Rosemary has something seriously wrong going on in her head. Not only the fact that she murdered so many innocent people for the money, but the fact that she truly didn't think she'd get caught. Apparently, Rosemary was blind to the very obvious strings that attached her to each victim. Although it can be argued that law enforcement as well was blind, if it took them six years and six victims to catch on to what she was doing. Female serial killers are rare, and as outlined by Psychology Today, their motives are different. Only 15% of serial killers are female, versus the 85% male. They focus on profit and power or sex and pleasure. Rosemary fits this bill, but she stands out in that female serial killers usually work alone. She seems to have had no problem bringing others, including Mudao, into the fold. And while male killers are often known for pushing pleasure to the extreme in grotesque ways, women, Rosemary being a perfect example, often approach these crimes with a colder attitude. Where Rosemary likely went wrong was exactly where she doesn't match up to the tight. Her sister being a prime example. If Rosemary had stuck to poison instead of strangulation, Audrey's death would have appeared more mysterious and have been harder to identify as an outright murder. But Rosemary approached each murder with violence, often beating her victims to death, or if her last acts of hiring undercover hitmen are any indication asking others to do the job for her. Psychology Today also speaks to the appearance of female serial killers, noting that evil can be pleasant and pretty on the outside, which lines up exactly with Rosemary's recent court appearances. A criminal profiler testified in court in 2021 and stated that Rosemary had no remorse. She refused to take responsibility for the crimes and had no empathy for the victims. She saw them as commodities, not people with whole lives to live. Rosemary's lieutenant also added that Rosemary posed a high risk to commit further crimes and was a danger to society. Currently, Rosemary seems to be taking advantage of the media, playing a game as if they are friends. She greets them, interacts with them, and doesn't shy away from the cameras as her accomplice has. But if Rosemary thinks she's going to get sympathy from the public, that's highly unlikely. 
At this point, it's obvious that she viewed her family as living paychecks, and she was using them for financial gain, uncaring of the consequences. As we wind up the recounting of this case, keep in mind that it's far from over. There's still a female accomplice out on the run, and once caught, Rosemary and Mudal will most likely be dragged right back into court. It will also be interesting to follow along and see if more murders surface, as Rosemary's history is carefully dissected by those investigating her. After all, a serial killer of her caliber spanning six years, what are the chances that she has other victims, not yet identified, possibly not even related to her? While Rosemary might have initially committed these crimes for the sake of money, there's no telling whether or not she attempted other murders beforehand for practice or pleasure. Don't forget that Rosemary also had a career with the police force, so to say she knew better is definitely an understatement at this point. Either way, it's obvious that something is deeply wrong with Rosemary. Not just because she was able to so coldly and cruelly kill off her family members one by one, but because she seems to have genuinely thought that she would never get caught. That's the biggest mistake most killers make. 